Hello, I am Alpra, to discuss about the session on the LHSDs. In today's session, we are going to conduct the unit number one introduction and in that today's topic is types of sampling and quantization. Now, let us see different types of sampling. Now, in previous lecture, we have seen the sampling theorem what is sampling and why it is required and we know that to convert any analog signal into digital form the first step is sampling so now let's see different types of sampling in sampling first type is ideal sampling and the second type is practical sampling right now in practical sampling there are another two types first one is natural sampling and the second one is flat top sampling now we will see this sampling in detail the first one is ideal sampling. To understand this better, let us consider one diagram. Here, first we will consider the analog input signal. That means our continuous time signal to which sampling is applied or from which we are going to obtain the ideal sampling. Okay. So, this is one continuous signal, continuous time signal x of t. We are going to consider a sign signal like this. Okay. And now consider the sampling signal. Okay. That means using which we have to provide the sampling. That means a train of impulses. Or else discrete time interval pulses using which we are going to have our sampling, right? Here the sampling instance or sampling interval should be equal. Let us consider this is the sampling instance TS, 2TS, 3TS, likewise. Okay. Now, according to this, sampling is obtained. That means the particular instant will have sampled signal right so this will be our sampled signal now according to this this will have the particular sampling instance so it will be like this so as you can see according to our analog input signal or as you can say original signal using this sample signal we are going to obtain this sample signal right that means using this sampling signal or else sampling function or else train of signals we are obtaining the sample signal right so this kind of sampling is called as idle sampling right so this is the first type that is our idle sampling okay now next one is our practical sampling now in this sampling as we have seen earlier there are two types that is first one is natural sampling and the second one is flat top sampling the difference between these two will be clear after this diagram so let us consider the previous case similarly that means we are going to consider one analog signal or else continuous time signal x of t okay it will be like this now here we are going to consider the train of impulses with discrete interval or as you can say same intervals this is a fixed with train of pulses according to which sampling will be done here the width that is this width is called as sampling duration or sampling time or sampling period right now if i want to consider the first one that is natural sampling it will be like this
that means according to this train of pulses this signal will be sampled it will be like this it will follow the shape of original signal so the kind of sampling we will get will look like this that means as you can see it follows this shape of our original analog input signal right so this is our natural sampling or as natural sampled signal okay now the next one is our flat top sampled signal what is the difference between these two let us see that so in flat top signal whenever these train pulses will be here that will touch to the analog signal the top of this will be flat so that's why the name is flat top sampling so it will be like this whenever this portion touch this signal the above part that is top will be flat same goes like this okay the top will be flat here this touch to this part so again flat top from this it is flat so it will look like this so this is our flat top sampled signal right so this is the basic difference between this two sampling signals that means in practical there are two sampling natural sampling and flat top sampling the natural sampled signal is like this and this is our flat top sampled signal right so in many of the application flat top sampling is used that means if you are using pam that is pulse amplitude modulation this type of flat top sample signal will be there and in some particular applications natural sample signaling is also used right so this is the practical sampling okay now next one is quantization so first of all this is the second step of the analog to digital conversion process that means first one is sampling second is quantizing and the third one is encoding so now second quantization what it means so quantization is actually a process of rounding off or the approximation approximation of what approximation of the original analog signal analog input signal to which we are getting the sampling values and for that we are getting the approximated values to encode it right so quantization is defined as the process of rounding off or approximation process and quantization is representing the sampled values of the amplitude by a finite set of levels which means converting a continuous amplitude sample into a discrete time signal that means we are getting the discrete time signal intervals from the continuous time input signal okay now consider this diagram in this the two signals are given to you that means here this signal that means the blue colored signal is indicating our analog input signal or as original input signal that is x of t for which we are going to get the quantized signals right this is analog signal x of t and this staircase representation that means the red colored figure is indicating our quantized signal that means of which we have got the quantization or as we have taking the approximation of the original signal right that means using this we are going to encode the output signal according to this bits right now this is called as staircase representation of the original signal so this quantized signal is also called as staircase representation of the original analog input signal right now in this staircase signal this is called as a step size right so according to this step size we are getting the approximated output signal the step size should be as small as possible to get the output signal 
with minimum quantization error right so this is the approximation or quantization representation of the analog signal okay now let us see the types of quantizations the first type of quantization is uniform quantization as the name suggests in this type of quantization the step size is uniform that means the staircase representation will have the step size constant throughout the entire input range that is uniform quantization the second one is non uniform quantization that means in this type of quantization the step size throughout the entire input range is not constant it is variable right let us see from one diagram for example in uniform quantization if i consider a signal like this okay and if i am getting the approximation of this signal so as you can see the step size is almost equal which is called as uniform quantization and if i consider this kind of signal for uniform non uniform quantization and if i take the step size variable that means for this interval i am getting the high step size then i am reducing the step size so in particular this interval the step size is not constant and here it is small right so this type of quantization is called as non uniform quantization where the step size is not constant okay now in uniform quantization there are two types of quantization process first one is called as mid thread quantization and the second one is called as mid riser quantization now what is the difference between this two quantizations so in mid thread quantization the origin lies between the thread part of the step that means let us consider this step okay a one step right so this flat portion is called as thread and this portion that is a high po portion is called as riser right so this is called as thread of a step and this is called as the riser part all right so in mid thread quantization the origin lies between this thread part and in mid riser it will be in middle part of the riser portion that means if i cut the signal like this and if the origin lies here it will be called as mid thread type and if i cut the signal like this and if origin lies here it will be called as mid riser quantization okay let us see them in detail so in uniform quantization first let us consider mid thread part so first we are going to consider the diagram indicating first one mid thread okay so here as we have discussed the flat portion of this step will be cut from here here it will lie the origin okay then the next step will go like this as this is uniform quantization the step size will be constant right this is the uniform quantization this axis indicates the input levels okay this indicates the output levels so this is the diagram of input versus output of a staircase representation or quantized signal of the original signal right now here this portion is cut to the half so this interval will give you the value s by 2 where s is the step size so this will be 3s by 2 then this will be 5s by 2 the next one will be 7s by 2 likewise okay similarly in the negative side this will be minus s by 2 this will be minus 3s by 2 this will be minus 5s by 2 and this is minus 
7 s by 2 okay now this is the entire step size s so this value will be s 2 s 3 s 4 s likewise similarly in the negative side minus s minus 2 s minus 3 s minus 4 s likewise okay now this is the mid red type okay now let us consider the next one that is mid riser type all right so we are going to draw the same signal for the next concept that is our mid riser so we are going to consider over here the diagram of input levels with output levels okay so this is a mid riser quantization so here the rising part of the step is cut to the half and the origin lies in between to that all right so it will be like this Similarly, at this side, okay. So, as you can see, it is cut from the half from the rising part, so that's why it is called as mid riser. Okay, now here the instant that means this is cut to the half, so this will give you the value s by 2, this will be 3s by 2. This will be 5s by 2. This will be 7s by 2. Similarly, in the negative side, this is minus s by 2. Sorry, this is minus s by 2. This is minus 3s by 2. This is minus 5s by 2. Okay. And this is the entire step size. It will have value s, 2s, 3s, 4s, likewise. And here this will have indicate minus s. Here it is minus 2s. Then there will be minus 3s, likewise. Okay. So this is the mid riser quantization. All right. So as you can see in mid thread, the thread part is cut to the half or it lies with at the origin and into mid riser the rising part is cut to the half and origin lies in between to the rising part okay now next is quantization error now what is quantization error so the difference between an input value and its quantized value is called as quantization error that means when you are representing the quantization or approximation of the original signal, there will be some difference to the input values and to quantized value. So this difference is called as quantization error. Okay. So as you can see from the diagram, the first one indicates original and quantized signal. And up below that, the function indicates the quantization error. Right. So this is called as approximation error as well. All right. To get this quantization error minimum, we need to take as many S samples as possible and we need to make the step size smaller so that quantization error reduces. Now these are the references for today's topic. Thank you.